Hi and welcome to the second video of this tutorial series. Last time we talked about the setup and today I'd like to talk about, uh, about how to feed your leaf cutter ant colony. Let's get straight into it. Now they're called leaf cutter ants for a reason. So the main thing to feed them is leaves, of course. Um, it's pretty obvious. So what you have to offer them, and I think it's important that you offer them all the time, is, is leaves inside the nest uh, that they can cut. They can use it for their fungus, to cultivate their fungus. And uh, I will not give you a list of all kind of leaves. Uh, most leaves are okay, most trees are okay. Um, you can make a Google search. Uh, if I start to tell you all about all the, the leaves that you can feed them, uh, it's going to be a very long video, especially since there are so many different kind of leaves in different places of the world and I don't know where you live. Um, I can tell you what works with my colonies. Uh, first of all, one thing I always offer them are uh, uh, blackberry leaves. They are very convenient. Uh, ants like them, they cut them and they stay fresh for quite a while. So if you put them into water like this, um, they will be fresh for, for, for quite a time, uh, around a week or, or even longer. So they will stay green and uh, that makes it very convenient. The other thing is they are also available in winter here in Switzerland, uh, where most trees have lost their leaves. Um, you still find blackberry leaves. So I try to feed them blackberry leaves all the time. I make sure that there are always some blackberry leaves in there so they are used to it that when there's a shortage in winter of other kind of leaves uh, they they already know these kind of leaves. Uh, what they also cut, actually my colony is quite picky, they don't cut many kind of leaves. Uh, what I've what's been successful with is hazelnut leaves, you can see it here. Uh, they like to cut it, you can see they did quite a job on this leaf here. Um, they like them as well, but they have a downside. They don't stay fresh very long. You know, you can see it here, this leaf here, uh, very dry. That's, this is usually what happens after two or three days. So uh, even if you put them into water, it doesn't stay fresh for a very long time. So that's the downside of them. And the absolute favorite of, at least for this colony, are elder leaves, as you can see here. Um, they cut them like mad. They are actually working on it right now, as you can see there. Uh, if, if there's elder leaves in there, they don't cut anything else anymore. They just focus on this one. And uh, it's it's the perfect uh, fungus booster, at, le at least for my colony. Because uh, if I put the uh, elder leaves in there, they will cut so much in only one day and work it all into the fungus. So every time there's elder leaves in there, the fungus makes a jump, you know, in, in growth rate. So uh, this is the perfect, uh, for this colony at least, it's the, fav the favorite leaves of all the things I have fed them before. Now what many other ant keepers said, uh, or what I heard from many other ant keepers is that roses work very well. Uh, I tried it with my colony, they don't, they don't like it too much, they don't touch it. But uh, I think it depends a little bit on the species, especially Atacephalotes uh, keepers are talking a lot about roses. So you can feed them wild roses or normal roses. That should work for most colonies, it doesn't really work for mine. But you have to find out a little, try it out, try different leaves. There are very few leaves that are poisonous that you shouldn't feed them, but again, make a Google search here. Uh, I, I, I'm not really an expert on botanics, so, um, but, but when you Google it, you find a lot of information about what kind of leaves to give them and what kind of leaves you shouldn't give them. Uh, as you can see, I always, I put the leaves into, uh, into water like um, you can see there, there are those oases with water in there. Um, this is to keep them fresh longer because I cannot get leaves every day. So uh, um, I, I get leaves like all three days or four days. In, in order to, to, for them to stay fresh, I put them into water. Now um, it might be, now and again it happens, it's very rare, but it might happen that uh, an ant will drown inside the water. Uh, it will fall in an instant round. Usually if they fall into the water, they can save themselves. They don't, uh, they, they just paddle around until they get back to the branches. But it, it happened. I, I lost a, a couple of ants, but I think the, the number of ants are so small that I lost that uh, I, I believe it's worth the risk. Anyway, this is about feeding them leaves. You can, alt alternative to leaves, you can feed them other stuff. You know, one thing I always give them is uh, oat flakes, as you can see here. Um, I believe it's, it's, it's very important for, to have something dry in there as well, some dry foods, because they actually they use the leaves and other foods to regulate humidity in their fungus chambers. So if it's too humid, it's always good that they have access to something that is dry, like for example, oat flakes. Uh, they really like it as well. 
Um, also, uh, in the last video, uh, in the comment section, one ant keeper said that he feeds them uh, cornflakes, which works as well. I never tried it, but it probably works when they like oat flakes. You can see here, it's just an ant carrying an oat flake. This is something that, uh, that you can give them as well. And other things are fruits, you know, like apples, bananas, stuff like that. Um, I will talk about a little bit more about that later. Now, this is, you know, uh, this is actually very, very quickly said about what you can feed them and so on. You can find a lot of information on the internet as well, um, if you look for it. I want to talk about a couple of things you have to think about when you feed them now. I don't just want to offer you a list, because there are a few things that you should know as a, as a keeper of leafcutter ants. Now, the first thing is, you know, in every documentary movie about leafcutter ants, you hear the same sentence, you hear the same thing, you know, uh, this statement that the leafcutter ants, they don't eat the leaves, they just use it um, to, to cultivate their fungus. And now, this is, yeah, this is only a half-truth, to be honest. It's only half-true. And as a, as, as a keeper of leafcutter ants, you should really know that this is only half-true. Because, yes, they use the leaves to cultivate the fungus, and the fungus provides them with food in return. But it's not that uh, they don't benefit themselves from the leaves, because uh, when they cut the leaves, they drink the tree sap of the leaves, you know, while cutting it. They, uh, and the tree sap contains sugar, and it's actually the, the, one of the very most important uh, carbohydrate sources of the leafcutter ant colony is tree sap. And people don't really know about it, don't, are not really informed about it, and also ant keepers. And I think it's very important that you know that uh, they need carbohydrates besides what uh, the, the fungus offers them. So they are dependent of, on the tree sap. And uh, I've seen many uh, um, ant keepers feeding them like dried leaves or, uh, or just oat flakes and stuff like this. And those kind of, uh, of, of, fo of food don't contain tree sap. So uh, they have a lack of, of carbohydrates. Also, even if, if you feed them fresh leaves, you know, at the moment you cut the leaves from the tree, uh, the, the amount of tree sap and the quality of the tree sap inside the leaves will um, decrease. So you have to remember that in the wild they will have the, 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 they will cut the leaves directly from the tree and the quality of the tree sap will be very good and there will be a lot of tree sap in those leaves. Uh, in captivity there is always a lower quality and a lower quantity of, of tree sap there. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, even if you feed them fresh leaves, I believe it's important to always have fresh leaves in there. But even if you feed them fresh leaves, they don't have the same amount of tree sap. So you should find a way to uh, add something. What I do is I give them sugar water or honey water uh, and they love it. You know, they take a lot of it, they drink a lot of it. And I believe that's very important to add something to give them carbohydrates. Now, uh, I tried honey, uh, pure honey in there because my other ants, they usually uh, like pure honey, but I think these species, uh, especially at this extent, and I also heard it from other ant keepers, they have problem when it's not liquid enough. So what I do is I put water in there, mix it with water, honey with water, so they can actually consume it, or sugar water. And uh, you can also add, um, feed them fruits, that's what I said before, they all, the fruits have a lot of carbohydrates as well. Uh, it's important that you give them something because, you know, I, I've heard from ant keepers who, who are complaining that the colonies are not really growing, even though uh, they give them a lot of, of, of stuff. But uh, they, they often, you know, use dried leaves or use leaves they had in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the freezer for quite a long time and so on. There's not much tree sap left in there. And the colony is not really growing anymore. And the thing is, if you don't offer carbohydrates to your colony, um, the, it will shorten the lifespan of the adult ants. You know, there's no problem with the brood because the brood is fed by the by the fungus. There's no problem for the queen. Uh, she will lay eggs. There will be brood. There will be larvas, and the colony will will survive because because uh, the, there there will always be new workers. But the lifespan of the workers are, is shortened because the lack of uh, carbohydrates. So uh, the colony will not grow at the same rate as as usual. So you should really think and consider about how to offer them additional carbohydrates. So that's something to keep in mind, that's something that is important to know. Uh, 
one thing about sugar water or honey water, don't offer it in a test tube. Um, I Usually with my other colonies, I always use a test tube, put sugar water in there, honey water in there, make a cotton barrier and they can suck on the cut cotton and suck the sugar water out or the honey water out. That works for all other ant species, not for leafcutter ants though. I tried it and it was disastrous. Uh, the thing is, as soon as there's sugar water or honey water inside the cotton, uh, the ants would like to use the cotton for uh, for the fungus, so they start cutting it out. And sooner or later the barrier will break and uh, you will have a huge mess. If the sticky sugar water or honey water in your setup and it might also drown some of your ants. So don't use a, a, a test tube setup, I use just this, you know, this little plate here. Um, got it from AntCheck, thank you very much. And uh, right now it's it's getting too small. I have to change uh, the technique because uh, they I have to refill it three times a day right now. That's something to bear in mind. Now the other thing, and that I think that's a very important thing because I believe a lot of colonies that have failed have failed because of that, is that you ha really have to consider uh, if your plants or also your fruits and stuff you feed them, if it's treated with some kind of pesticides or fungicides. Um, because pesticides will kill your ants, fungicide will kill your, your, your fungus. And uh, I think that's very important to keep in mind. It's very important to, uh, to consider uh, where do you get your leaves? Where do you get your fruits? Where do you get your food that you offer them? Uh, personally, I would personally request try to get as much as you can in, out in nature, not from the store, not from a grocery store. Uh, I heard people feeding them spinach or salad from the grocery store and all of a sudden their fungus died. And that's because most of those plants, most of the foods that we cons uh, buy in grocery stores are actually treated some way or, or another. And uh, a lot of it, especially plants, are treated with fungicides and um, you cannot just wash it up, uh, wash it away from the, from the plants because it's inside the plants. If, if a plant is treated with fungicide over a period of time, it will become part of the plant, you cannot just wash it away. And uh, so if you have to feed them something out of the grocery store, make sure it's organic all the time. Make sure it's organic. Uh, as, uh, also with fruits, I believe, you know, uh, I lost a lot of fungus because I once uh, fed them an apple that was probably treated with fungicide. Uh, and that was a huge mistake. So never, never feed them anything that is not organic. And even if you do try to, it's better to, to go into nature. Also, if you cut leaves in nature, um, make sure you don't cut leaves right next to a field that is used for agriculture, where the farmers might have sprayed pesticides or fungicides. I believe actually fungicide is one of the, the main sources why people fail with, with uh, keeping leaf cutter ants because they at one time they fed them something, especially when, if it's a young colony, a small colony with, with little fungus, and they fed them something with fungicide, the ants will not realize it immediately, you know, they will, they will cut the leaves, they will not realize that there's fungicide on them. And uh, of course, as, as soon as they realize that it harms their fungus, they will stop cutting it, but usually, especially with smaller colonies, this can be too late already. And uh, so make sure uh, that you get your leaves and your food somewhere where, where you can be sure there's no fungicides involved. Um, yeah, I think that's very important to remember. And yeah, I think that's the most important things about feeding. Just remember uh, to offer them carbohydrates next to the leaves. Just remember to make sure that there are no fungicides or pesticides involved. And then I think you should be good. Yes, this is about this about feeding. Uh, the next video will be about keeping your fungus alive. We will talk about temperatures, humidity and stuff. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. If you like this video, please leave a like. Um, if you have questions about how to feed them, uh, just put it into the comment section. I really like to answer questions. And if also if you have feedback or other um, ideas or other things that you think people should think about, put it into, into the comment section. I will sure, sure I will answer every every comment or every question that is in the comment section if I can of course if I know the answer uh, I'm not I, I don't claim that I know all the answers but if I can I will answer them if you want to see the next videos uh, then there will be at least two more about of this tutorial series so if you want to see them and don't miss them make sure you're subscribed and that you have the bell icon activated so you will get notification of the next video Anyway, I think that's it for now. 
and we'll see each other on the next video. Thank you very much.